This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is on igneous petrology. It's an introduction to all the different types of both igneous and extrusive igneous formations, both on the surface and underground. So we have this diagram here looking at both the surface conditions and landscapes and also under the ground in the crust and lithosphere from the surface down to about down and this can depend on location based on its continental crust or oceanic crust so we start with the surface landforms and some volcanic geomorphology in terms of what is formed on the surface from this volcanic activity and we're looking at the extrusive igneous formations which is basically volcanology and volcanoes and magma and rising to the surface to form lava that's going to flow on the surface and form these amazing volcanoes and they come in different types obviously the, the left we've got the strato or the composite volcano usually once layered of ash and lava and various levels of explosivity and the vei index with the conduits and pipes and parasitic cones and side uh, cones and eruptions and volcanoes and then you got the mostly tephra based ash-based scoria or cinder cone volcanoes which come in groups they're smaller you have the fissure eruptions and fissure volcanoes that are classically found in areas like iceland and you have the large shield or caldera volcanoes that are very wide and usually very tall and very impressive and some most explosive volcanoes in the world come from this and we're also looking at uh shield volcanoes like mauna loa and mauna kea in the hawaiian islands in the united states so the lava is going to come on the surface and form these volcanoes and really that's the extrusive types that you're going to get is the volcanoes really uh, any kind of crack in the ground where lava is going to come up through because of pressure and decompression melting you're going to have a some sort of volcanic activity now on the right hand side you have a little volcanic neck which is basically the remnants or ancient volcano and this is part of the hardened magma that didn't erupt and part of the conduit and part of the the crater and pipe system that the volcano was built around and the surrounding rock the volcano was made of has been either eroded or weathered away over time and what's left is the more resistant magma inside the conduit which forms this volcanic neck pretty awesome sight to see in real life so the connecting system underneath these active volcanoes of any type is where the flowing magma is coming up from a deeper source, maybe a diapair or diapair or a plume of some sort with convection currents moving this magma of different variations of elements and temperature and composition up to the towards the surface, towards the crust or through the crust and producing a magma chamber where the magma is going to sit there until the eruption happens where pressure builds up from generally the gas and volatiles inside the magma will come to a certain point where it will cause an eruption. So then we have a thing called plutonism where we form plutons. Now these plutons are a general term for any igneous intrusive formation or area that is hardened igneous rock formed from the cooling uh, and, and consolidation and crystallization of magma in some sort of a small type or an accumulation over a long period of time in terms of millions of years of accumulating magma chambers or these rising plumes from the deeper or lower mantle rising up into the crust and lithosphere and cooling down over a very long period of time and allowing these crystals to form and the process of creating this igneous rock, the first rock type. And there are main types of plutons underground. There are some big ones and small ones and they form in different ways. Now the biggest one is called a batholith. Now this is generally these large igneous rocks that are formed underground which are in excess of a hundred uh, cubic kilometers in volume and size. Then the ones that are a little bit smaller, that are under 100 uh, cubic kilometers in, in volume, is going to be called a stock. And they can also have these little chunks, these little pieces of broken rock inside the magma of different types. And these are called xenoliths. These are able to identify especially deeper rocks like pyrotite 
when these xenoliths come up to the surface, we can analyze these chunks that are visible inside the, the ground mass or the matrix of this huge stock or batholith and estimate the age and origin and location. Then we get the smaller types of plutons, the ones that kind of feed up. These are rising magma that come through the different layers towards the surface. The ones that are vertical are called dikes. The ones that are horizontal are called sills. Pretty straightforward. And these are, again, hardened magma. And the sills are, are awesome because they can penetrate and move through and create areas through the horizontal bedding or strata of the above sedimentary rock because most of the rock around the or towards the crust or surface is going to be sedimentary in nature. Now, it could get some metamorphism happening around the hot magma igneous rock formations. So you might get some contact metamorphism and change the rocks into different uh, types based on pressure and temperature. And that could also be there in the underground environment. Then we get the lacolith. These are smaller batholiths that are generally close to the surface that have this kind of shape where it's a flatter bottom in deeper areas and it kind of uh, curves upwards towards the surface. And the opposite is where the concave goes down and more of a flat surface towards the flat layer towards the surface is called a lopolith. So those two kind of flip-flop based on where the dome is pointing. Pointing up is a lacolith, pointing down, lopolith. Now, all of these intrusive plutons can be called a suite, which is basically a term given for a area of various similar or same composition rocks in terms of igneous, metamorphic, or sedimentary.